Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study published in JAMA looks into vitamin supplementation. Makes for very interesting reading. Enough waffling of me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read out of Northwestern University, but it echoes very much what I've been saying for about three years, or basically since I started my longevity experiment. Many people think a multivitamin or any dietary supplement for that matter fills the nutritional gap in their diet. Indeed, in the US, people spent in 2021 close to $50 billion on vitamins and dietary supplements. And there's a link in the description below to the editorial published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Dr. Jeffrey Linder, MD, Chief of Internal Medicine at Northwestern said, people ask all the time, what supplements should I be taking? They're wasting their money and focus, thinking that there has to be a magic set of pills that will keep them healthy when we should all be following the evidence-based practices of eating healthy and exercising. Dr. Linda and his team wrote an editorial that was published in JAMA. The editorial supports the new recommendations from the United States Preventive Services Task Force. The task force are an independent panel of national experts that frequently make evidence-based recommendations about clinical preventive services. Their study was based on a systematic review of 84 other studies. The task force's new guidelines state there was insufficient evidence that taking multivitamins, paired supplements, or even single supplements can help prevent cardiovascular disease and or cancer in otherwise healthy, non-pregnant adults. The task force is specifically recommending against taking beta-carotene supplements because of a possible increased risk of lung cancer and is recommending against taking vitamin E supplements because it has no net benefit in reducing mortality, cardiovascular disease or cancer. Dr. Linda said, the task force is not saying don't take multivitamins, but there's this idea that if these were really good for you, we'd know by now. The harm is that talking with patients about supplements during the very limited time we get to see them, we're missing out on counseling about how to really reduce cardiovascular risks, like through exercise or smoking cessation. More than half of US adults take dietary supplements. Eating fruit and vegetables is associated with decreased cardiovascular disease and cancer risk. So it's reasonable to think that key vitamins and minerals could be extracted from fruits and vegetables, packaged into a pill, and this would save people the trouble and expense of maintaining a balanced diet. But the team explained that whole fruits and vegetables contain a mixture of vitamins, phytochemicals, fiber, and other nutrients that probably act synergistically to deliver their health benefits. Micronutrients in isolation may act differently in the body than when they're naturally packaged with a host of other dietary components in the whole food. However, Dr. Linda noted that individuals who have a specific vitamin deficiency can still benefit from taking dietary supplements, such as calcium and vitamin D, which have been shown to prevent fractures and maybe even falls in older adults. My comment here is the only way you'll know if you're either insufficient or deficient in something is to have a blood test and then only supplement with what your body really needs. Dr. Natalie Cameron, the JAMA editorial co-author and an instructor of general internal medicine at Feinberg said, the new USP STF guidelines do not apply to women who are pregnant or who are trying to get pregnant. Pregnant individuals should keep in mind that these guidelines do not apply to them. Certain vitamins such as folic acid are essential for pregnant women to support healthy fetal development. The most common way to meet these needs is to take a prenatal vitamin. More data is needed to understand how specific vitamin supplementation may modify the risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes 
and cardiovascular complications during pregnancy. Dr. Jenny Jai, MD, who studies the prevention of chronic diseases in low-income families through lifestyle interventions, said healthy eating can be a challenge when the US industrialized food system does not prioritize health. And the recent research from Northwestern has found most women in the US have poor heart health prior to becoming pregnant. Dr. Jai went on to say, common advice is to adopt a healthy diet and exercise more. That's easier said than done, especially among low income Americans. Healthy food is expensive and people don't always have the means to find environments to exercise. Maybe it's unsafe outdoors or they can't afford a facility. So what can we do to try to make it easier to help support healthier decisions? One reason I've become skeptical of multivitamins is the overall dose of each compound. Take a look at the supplement facts label here and see how much of each compound either meets or gets close to the recommended daily allowance. Feel free to pause the video now. The only one that states 100% is vitamin D, which is good. Vitamin D is actually a hormone and not a vitamin, but it is essential. However, look at what they class as an acceptable daily value. It's only 400 international units. Now look at this National Institutes of Health fact sheet. It states 400 international units is only good for babies up to the age of one. Most of us who watch the channel are aged between 19 and 70. So it's 600 international units a day, which means this supplement is underdosed and the manufacturers are probably lying. Okay, so look at the label again. Bearing in mind what I've said earlier, does anything stand out? Feel free to pause the video if you need to. Let me remind you, the task force is specifically recommending against taking beta carotene because of a possible increase of lung cancer. Look at the vitamin A. 50% of that vitamin A comes from beta carotene. Also look at the other ingredients. These do not need to be quantified and there's a lot of fillers there. It also lists beta carotene again. So how do you know what supplement to use? First of all, you need to get a blood test. See what you are insufficient or deficient in. Then see if you can up those levels through diet and lifestyle. If you can, you need to do that first. Then get tested again. If you are still insufficient or deficient, then look at a targeted supplement regime that hits only what you need and not the multivitamin hit everything and hope method. I think one of the most dishonest type of multivitamins is that specifically made to target a specific age group. Things such as multivitamins for the over 50s or for men over 50s or even for women over 30. Why not women under 20? Because there's no market for that. There are certainly women under 20 who will be insufficient or deficient in something and they would probably buy the product, but not enough for the company to make a profit. They only sell to those who are able to afford it. There's no way that all men over 50 or all women over 30 have exactly the same supplementary needs. So these companies are all guessing and most of us are buying their lies. Well, I hope you found it interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, you may have guessed from that that I really am not a big fan of multivitamins. I think they really are the snake oil of the supplement industry. Uh, there cannot be a less targeted supplement on the market. Now, I'm sure there's going to be people watching this who swear by the multivitamin they take and really do believe that it is doing them good. What I would say is take a blood test, see what your body really does need, and then look at the multivitamins to see whether or not they are in fact meeting that need. And if they're not, possibly look at buying one or two separate supplements as opposed to the one hit everything and hope that you're going to get covered. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.